So, in the last class we have discussed about the high resolution electron microscopy principles and uh, I said that we will discuss about the image simulation today. As we know that high resolution electron microscopy gives you images of the atoms or the columns of atoms to the resolution level of Armstrong or sub Armstrong even uh, it is possible to obtain resolution level of 0 0.8, 0 0.7 Armstrong in the microscopes available today. The problem is that interpretation of such high resolution images are really a difficult or daunting task because image contrast can vary drastically depending on the focus as we know. As we have I have shown you that defocus is the most important factor in obtaining the high resolution images in the time electron microscope. So, therefore, uh, during uh, the subsequent process after we receive the images from the microscope we need to simulate it using uh, the prescribed models available for the crystal structure of the material. If it is a crystalline, if it is a non crystalline material then we must have a prescribed model available for the structure of the non crystalline material like amorphous or uh, a, any other structure. So, during uh, as you know during imaging process the electrons undergoes three distinct interactions if we have to list down in a very short form. And each of these interactions can be simulated in a computer. So, first thing or first interaction electron undergoes is called the basically because of this uh, dynamical scattering of the electrons in the in this sample or the specimen. And this may basically this can be simulated the dynamic scattering is basically because electrons falls on a sample and then can get scattered uh, in different directions and this is a basically it is a dynamical process. So, one needs to apply the dynamical diffraction theory to obtain the, the, the exit wave functions of the electrons. Now, this can be done using a technique called multi slice method. Uh, in this method actually the specimen is sliced into many slices uh, actually specimen is basically taken into many many different uh, you know small slices and then uh, this slice is basically taken at a normal to the electron beam uh, or instant beam and then uh, this after we obtain the slices we can simulate the electron interaction dynamical interaction of the electron with the material by using different methods. There are methods like a reciprocatory uh, reciprocal space formalism or fast Fourier transformations or real space approach or block wave approach depending on how precisely you want to determine the interactions. Now, I do not have time to deal into de talking to each of these techniques very precisely uh, because of the time constraint, but nowadays uh, any conventional textbook on the transmission electron microscopy will provide you all the knowledge base available for these techniques. The most important technique which you day to day apply in the high electronics microscopy is called fast Fourier transformations. In this technique we basically use uh, the actual high resolution image which showing the columns of the atoms as a real space image and then Fourier transform the, uh, the uh, this real space information and obtain the diffraction pattern then compare the diffraction patterns with the with the ones which is can be derived from the structural model available provided we know this structure of the material very precisely. And then by comparing it we can get uh, many interesting information regarding the, the interaction of the electrons with the material. An input to such a multi slice method obviously, uh, has to contain different parameters of the specimen or the object like unit cell, the position of the atoms and inside the unit cell, the, the what is called thermal factor, devaluer factor because of the vibration of the atoms as the temperature increases and the orientation of the specimen or orientation of the crystals or the, or the object as well as the thickness. So, this itself is basically not a easy simulation as you understand there are so many parameters which goes into the simulations. And if we do not have distinct information or distinct values of these parameters like thickness of the specimen 
the object orientations, the values of the of the Dybala factors very precisely for the material which you are studying we do not get very you know good simulated picture. Now, results of this calculation actually gives us the wave function as we know wave function is this uh, uh, important uh, result of this wave function at the exit plane of the sample is obtained by using the multi slice method. And uh, in the second step once you obtain this wave functions the formation of the images in the electron microscopic uh, the time spectrum microscope can be simulated using different equations which I have discussed this equations actually are based on the transfer functions. So, transfer functions actually are to be known a priori for a particular set of microscopes. Once you know the transfer functions and related equation how this the, the points in the specimen is getting transferred to the image plane then uh, we can basically obtain the uh, instrumental factors in the image. So, therefore, in this uh, simulation second step simulation one is to provide all the information regarding the instrument or the microscope which you are using for obtaining highly spectral microscopic images and this includes obviously the spherical aberration constant the defocus as well as even if it is possible to give the information regarding the currents of the different uh, uh, the lenses subsequent to the objective lens. Finally, in the third step electrons intensity of the, the electron beams which are coming at the image plane because of this uh, interaction can be calculated by squaring the wave function and uh, this can be displayed like a monotone or half tone image basically half tone image on a high resolution uh, screen on a computer. So, these st three steps are normally done nowadays in all kinds of uh, computers uh, available where the commercial software actually allows you to run this uh, different steps and provide you actually the image uh, which is can be uh, compared with the actual image. Now, in practice uh, this is actually routinely done in the, um, the no, in the even while doing the microscopy one can run these things one can use uh, these functions which are available in the software uh, in the computer and compare and get information. Or otherwise if, if, if the structure looks to be very complicated then one needs to go back to the structure modify it and then obtain images which can be then compared. But you know these simulations obviously are dependent on many input parameters as we have seen the most important input parameters are the specimen and the microscope itself. Now, as far as the microscope is concerned one can actually give this input parameters very precisely the direct values of the C s or the specular Western constant or even the defocus values can be provided. But as far as the specimen is concerned it is very difficult to provide the actual values of the of the input parameters like you know orientation of the, the sample, the thickness of the sample where the image is taken and many what is called other parameters. So, that is why many people actually what they do they initially obtained this information or measure the thickness of the sample very precisely using convergent electron diffraction technique or some other technique available and also uh, determine the orientation of the sample very precisely and use this as input a uh, precise values of this are used as input to the simulation. So, that one can obtain uh, as called good uh, images for reasons you know uh, this are sometimes uh, available for reasons this are sometimes not available to do the simulations. If you are lucky enough you are you having a good microscopic team then you can get this information very easily from your experiment own experiment or from your colleague experiments during the whole set of uh, time selector microscopy and then you can run these simulations. At the same time uh, for the machine as I said it is possible to provide the precise information of specular button constant or defocus values, but many times we do not rely on that the defocus values which are provided. Rather what we do is that we take a series of defocus images from the 
uh, hallucinant electron microscope uh, and then uh, compare it with the simulated images. This is, so therefore, in a nutshell, I could basically uh, show you a, a simple you know, simulated picture in the slide where this is the specimen you see there electrons from the uh, gun falls on the specimen after going through different uh, you know, lenses and then interacts interaction basically dynamical in nature and then is basically uh, passes to the other lenses in the microscope like intermediate projector lenses and finally, you obtain image in a CCD camera nowadays. And uh, to make life simpler we always get a defocus series of images where defocus is very of the orbital is very very uh, what is called systematically and images are obtained as black and white dots as you have seen in some of the pictures and these images are fed into the computer. Once this image fed in the computer, computer has the software inbuilt and these softwares are basically runs based on these three principles which I have just now told you and then reconstruct the original image by comparing with the, the model available. And finally, it gives you a potential map. So, that is actually the cycle in which we simulate the images and obtained finally, a, a most comparable image. But you understand from this whole process because there are a lot of input variables which can be changed or the few variables and also the complexity of the whole technique tells you that it is not an easy one to basically get information out of high-resolution images. That is why nowadays people provide this high-resolution images in the different papers or the books just for the sake of increasing the quality of the images. Many times we find that the exact information from these images uh, are lacking in the both in the papers and sometimes in the books also because of this uh, problem of simulating these images and getting the quantitative information. So, obviously qualitatively one can explain the images using such software, but obtaining quantitative information requires another, another kind of simulations which are much more complex and probably out of the scope of this particular course. So, I will not go in detail of this, but just to give you an idea that how complex is this uh, you know simulations I am just telling you this aspect that be careful while comparing the actual images with the simulated ones. Sometimes this may be misleading. So, therefore, you need to first learn how to obtain good image in the electron microscope like good ones in such as Titan and then compare these images with the best possible software available in this world to extract quantity information about the micrographs. So, with this I close uh, the uh, high electron microscopy uh, portion of this course and I move on to the next portion of this uh, course that is called STEM scanning transmission electron microscopy. As you know scanning transmission electron microscopy has become an integral part of the uh, microscope nowadays all the modern day microscopes has uh, scanning electron microscopy facility scanning transmission electron microscopy facility. This is has originated from uh, uh, work by Crowley, Crew and many others and those who have tried very hard to use scanning time electron microscopy. The reason scanning electron microscopy is important is because of these aspects. We can get information for bright field, angular dark field images high angle dark field, high ended angular dark field images which can give us jet contrast. We can also uh, what is called we integrate this stem with ILS energy filter uh, energy electron energy loss spectroscopy which can be used to obtain energy filter images. One can also integrate this with converging electron beam or nano electron beam diffractions and if one can actually use the stem to get holographic images. So, I will not be able to discuss all of them in, in, in this in this course, but I will try to give an idea how STEM works and how STEM can be used to obtain different sets of informations. As I said the concept of scanning transmission electron microscopy is not a new one. 
it has been employed uh, by Crewe long back uh, who introduced this whole concept into the electron microscopic community and he actually used first time showed that for scanning times electron microscopy you need to use most notably the uh, <coughs> film emission guns. So, in a scanning times electron microscopic images what we basically do is uh, like this we have a basically a fake source or FEG source what we can say which has a very high brightness and a very small energy spread. This FEG source can be focused by using the objective lens on the specimen. Obviously, the FEG source when it is focused on the specimen by using uh, these this kind of objective lenses the beam will be demagnified electron beam and basically with this beam is called convergent beam and once the convergent beam falls on the sample or the specimen it diffracts and gives you diffraction disk and this diffraction disk can be either transmitted transmit electron beam or diffracted beams. Now, one can actually use different detectors below this specimen to obtain the uh, images using this uh, that is called either transmitted beam or the diffracted beam. So, that is the basically idea. So, it is shown very nicely here in the second picture where you can see this is a source or electron beam which is then it is it is uh, can be scanned over the sample by, by using a deflector which is there in normal scanning electron microscope and this image is falling this beam is falling on the objective lens which focuses a demagnified the electron beam to a very small size beam called converged electron beam on the specimen and then specimen diffracts and we can get different kinds of informations which are listed there. So, this is basically the idea. Now, as you understand that uh, you know as the converged beam falls on a specimen uh, some part of this uh, converged beam will be uh, diffracted and some part will be transmitted. So, if one collect this uh, diffracted beam intensity using a detector one can form dark field images or if one collects this transmitted beam uh, using a detector one can actually display this as a bright field images. So, and then once this, this beam scans over the sample and this whole imaging can goes on as a speed of the raster uh, just like a scanning electron microscope. In scanning electron microscope the raster scans the B electron beam and signals like backscatter electron or the secondary electrons or whatever other signals are generated these signals are then used to display the image on the computer screen. Same thing can be done here also as the beam scan on the sample the diffracted or the transmitted beam can be either of them uh, can be taken by the detector and we can can be then plotted on the computer to obtain an image. So, the first thing you understand the intensities of the diffracted beams or the transmitted beam which is passing through the sample is a totally dependent on the inten initial intensity of the convergent beam which is falling on the specimen. So, that is why in this kind of uh, stem uh, configuration one uses something known as FIG or what is called as field emission guns reason is very simple the field emission guns intensities of the electron beams are very high almost 3 to 4 order magnitude higher than the normal lab 6 it, it, the filaments or the tungsten hairpin filaments. So, these beams the which are high energy or high intensity beams rather can be demagnified to about nowadays 1 nanometer or even less in many cases one can go down to 0.5 nanometers also demagnified and to get a very very fine probe of very good intensity of falling on a sample. So, that the diffracted beam which is coming or the, the beam which are coming out from the exit surface of the specimen can have sufficient intensity to get you know informations regarding the sample. So, that is why FEG sources are normally used as I uh, as to give an idea the if I take a FEG uh, uh, field emission gun source 1 nanometer beam has a current of 0.5 nano amps. So, that is why with a FEG bright and dark field stem images can be easily recorded within few seconds or even at a 
TV scan rate that is what we want. We want the beam to scan on the sample and then image to be displayed at the same scan rate. So, to do that you need a TV scan rate and to get a TV scan rate you need to have a sufficient intensity of the beam. So, as I have discussed with you this the, the slide this looks like a very simple, but there are a lot of attachments involved which I have removed for the sake of simplicity of the images. But essentially the components in a scanning transmission electron microscopy is ex all more or less same as a conventional transmission electron microscopic instrument and uh, not much difference is there. So, except that as a scanning coil which, which, which can uh, make the beam scan on the sample like in a raster mode just like a scanning electron microscope. But you know the there are practically there are a lot of advantages using this uh, scanning transmission electron microscopy. So, the, the real advantage is that the dark field images can be obtained with a very high collection efficiency in stem as compared to the uh, normal dark field images in conventional transmission electron microscope. This is mainly because that uh, the all these scatter electrons outside the incident beam spot can be collected in a, in a, in a, a stem mode. And once we collect all the uh, scatter electrons or diffracted beams, the intensity of the diffracted beams is sufficiently high so that it can be uh, it can give us a very good collection efficiency. That is one of the biggest advantage, and that is why almost half of the imaging detectors in the stem mode are dark field, like annular dark field, high angle annular dark field, these are actually routinely used to obtain all kinds of different information which we are going to discuss one by one. Not only that that is the biggest informat, uh, advantage not only that another important advantage is that in the stem in a conventional electron microscope uh, the conventional TM normally a two dimensional detector such as photographic plates or a CCD camera is uh, used to record the intensities at all image points which are in parallel like as the beams uh, goes parallel and falls on the screen the images are recorded. But in stem image information is produced in a serial form like a time dependent voltage or current variation. For many years in fact this gives stem this unique possibility of online image processing to manipulate the image contrast for special uses or purposes. And now we have the CCD cameras available of high quality high resolutions and so therefore, this gives us the serial readout or online image processing processes and sit in conventional TM also. However, STEM uh, for the STEM there are many other possibilities exist. Thus, in STEM detectors can be or the uh, in STEM actually several detector can be used simultaneously to produce images. Uh, from the different signals coming out from the sample. So, there are a variety of these stem detectors available and uh, which I can show you here or I have listed down there variety of stem detectors available to obtain different signals other than this white field and dark field. So, as this beam falls on a sample specimen it is one part of the beam is getting diffracted that is what is the big uh, this diffracted disc is shown here other part is called zero beam which is not undergoing supposed to be undergoing not undergoing any diffraction as far as scatter beam. So, we can put a bite field detector there and we can put a dark field detector there and obtain conventional bite field dark field images just like that. As the collection efficiency high for dark fields image quality is better even many cases resolution is also better because the beam which is basically uh, coming out after diffractions they contain uh, the information which are having very high resolutions. Not only that one can actually use an integrate as I said uh, the stem with the electron energy loss spectrometer which can allow not only allow you micro analysis of, of the specimen a very small area to detect elemental presence or the state of different elements present in the sample or specimen in a small area but also it allows you to from the images with electron that have lost particular amount of energy. 
we have to understand that yields basically operates on the energy loss of the electrons. So, as the electrons comes out of the, of the sample exit phase they carry loss information because they have under they have electrons have undergone different kinds of amount of energy loss and this is nothing but because of the inelastic scattering of the electrons in the specimen. And so therefore, we can trap this information by trapping those electrons which have undergone loss of energy because of inelastic scattering and this loss can be characterized depending on the type of element present in the sample. So, one can actually use a certain kind of technique in which a specific energy levels can be used to obtain image and these are all called energy filter imaging. And uh, so therefore, uh, the what is called as the images which corresponding to electrons that have lost a particular amount of energy can be obtained. And to give you an idea this is the illustration which I have shown in the very first lecture for the nanocrystalline copper pulse electro deposited using thiourea. So, it is deemed or thought the thiourea act as a gain refiner by pinning the gain boundaries of the copper, but there is no uh, work or no experimental evidence available showing that thiourea molecule is exactly sitting at the periphery of the copper grains during electro deposition of the copper. So, to show that one can actually use what is known as energy filter imaging using ELS. As I said that ELS can be used to filter out or the to image or to obtain images for the electrons which have lost a particular amount of energy. This is the left side of the picture is basically showing you the normal bite film image and right side of the picture is taken using sulfur energy edge which is that means the electrons which have lost energy corresponding to sulfur energy edge in the yields and that can be used to obtain the bite field or image and there you can see this bright lines at the gain boundaries many places this bright line signifies the presence of sulfur. And as I told you even the very first lecture the thiourea is basically a molecule which contains sulfur other than nitrogen, hydrogen and carbon and sulfur is the distinct uh, um, uh, part of the molecule. So, the presence of sulfur means presence of the thiourea. So, by doing this kind of exercise one can actually obtain images to the resolution of the electron uh, the, the thermos electron microscope where we can show that uh, where a particular element is present. So, therefore, this are now this the does routinely in fact, in catalyst which is a very important field of research nowadays one can actually use this uh, energy filter images to clearly signify where a particular element is present or not. So, other than that uh, the, uh, the in the uh, stem mode this is uh, one of the yields is one of the most important uh, attachment to this, to this scanning transmission electron microscope which many many uh, microscope has the microscope which I showed you uh, we, 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 we in our uh, campus do not have this wheels, but I have shown you how the yields can be attached at the bottom of the microscope just below the camera yields can be attached and the signal can be processed using computer. Also images can be formed in the stem mode by using low energy secondary electrons or OG electrons or characteristic x-rays rather. So, serial nature of this image signals provides basically possibility of the quantifications basically and uh, then the information can be correlated with the specimen compositions, crystallography and as well as the morphology. So, another important uh, detector is basically added into the microscope or into the stem is known as hard if high angle annular detector. This uh, was basically done or the developed by Cruet et al and uh, they have seen that if we use annular detector annular detector means it is just like this like this. Suppose, this is the specimen this is the specimen here as you can see and this is my convergent beam coming from this objective lens stem and then obviously, electrons are undergoing diffractions. So, if you use a detector which is annular type. So, what actually happens is that we can 
we can uh, collect the diffraction information in a disc okay, surrounding by this central circle and this is what is called annular detector. In fact, the reasons for it which I will tell you within, within few minutes time. So, if we can put these detectors at a very high angle, very high angle means not very high angle. In electron diffraction you have to remember the scattering uh, happens at a small angle maybe one uh, red uh, micro radian or few actually uh, micro radians uh, or few uh, one or two micro radians like that. So, the high angle means of that nature not that several couple of uh, 20, 30, 40 radians or so no. So, in the, so therefore, these detectors can be placed just like this one source here at a little distance from the transmitted electron beams or the 0 beam and they contain information regarding the atomic number contrast. It has been shown by Cuvier et al that basically that intensity of the image which forms by these detectors is proportional to z to the power 3 by 2, where z is basically the atomic number of the element present in the specimen. So, therefore, these detectors if we collect the information from the detector and display will tell us chemical compositions of the phases present in the microscope. This is very clear and this is routinely done nowadays. In fact, the microscope which I showed you has a Hardy detector and Hardy detector takes the signal which are coming out or coming from the specimen uh, at a la little larger angle than the diffract commonly diffracted beam in, in a annular detector and displays on the computer screen. So, to show you one such image uh, here this one I have shown you in the very first lecture of this course. This is basically a picture the uh, one uh, in the uh, taken in a high dip detector in an microscope uh, where there is a fake gun. So, as you see this is there are a lot of large number of nano particles present in this uh, specimen and this nano particles are embedded in a matrix uh, it can be it is basically here is aluminum matrix and these nano particles are laid in eutectic alloys. And uh, as you can clearly see it that in a high angle annular dark field TM image we can clearly see these particles having showing distinctly two phase contrast one is layer solute solution or is thin solute solutions. Aluminum is shown as a dark. So, as we know that aluminum having very low atomic number. So, therefore, jet contrast because of the aluminum will be very low. On the other hand lead and tin having very high atomic number. So, jet contrast will be very high, but there will be distinctly different uh, jet contrast variation in and it from the tin and the lead which is seen from, from the uh, brightness of this different portion of the particles as I said that the bulk of the particle as you see on the right hand side picture is tin or the cap is basically lead and lead having higher atomic number than the tin will be looking brighter in the hard deep images. So, this is again taken from our own work. So, one can actually use this, this particular technique to decipher this kind of informations and other rather to decipher different kind of phases presence. This is exactly equivalent to the backscatter electron imaging in scanning electron microscope where the backscatter electrons carry the information regarding the jet contrast and we routinely do in in the scale in the in the, in the scanning electron microscope uh, to obtain the, the jet contrast images so that we can see different phases very clearly exactly same thing can be done in stem, but at a resolution of high resolution electron microscope. Now, one of the biggest fallout of this particular uh, hard detector is this if we can use this hard detector to obtain high resolution electron micros micrographs. Okay. So, to how to do it I will just explain you within few minutes time is like this. Suppose, you have a very thin portion of the sample or specimen and you are using the stem mode. So, that the, the convergent beam is focused on to the particular column of atoms and obviously, as I said you using fake good fake. Uh, uh, guns one can actually convert the electron beams to 1 nanometer or in 0.5 nanometer level. So, if if the small beam a very high intensity falls on a column of atoms and then this column of atoms contains suppose different uh, atoms of different atomic numbers. Some of them are like aluminum which is very low, 
some of them let us suppose contains holomium or maybe some other very heavy uh, lead very high atomic numbers. So, obviously, the atoms which are heavy they will diffract strongly than the atoms which are having low atomic numbers. So, if we take or if you collect this information in higher detectors in a high resolution mode, we can clearly depict that which atom is what actually whether it is aluminum atom or it is a holomium atom or it is basically a lead atom one can clearly show on the microscope at the resolution of the high resolution micrograph. So, this is one of the another important thing which normally people do and if we collect this high resolution, high, high resolution images in a hard if mode or in this in the uh, from the hard detectors uh, serially then one can build the whole structure of the crystal slow by slowly one by one. Well nowadays using titan we do not need to do it because in a titan basically one can get the uh, distinct contrast from different atoms like one can, can contrast from uh, the I have shown you the example of strontium titanium in the last lecture from strontium titanium titanium and oxygen differently. So, you do not need actually hard wave detector that way. So, this is another advantage of the stem, the stem actually has changed the whole color of the electron microscopy so much. Now, as I said that uh, uh, the, the one of the uh, what is called advantage of this high, high angle analog detector is to obtain z contrast images, but it has its own uh, you know limitation also. Limitation in the sense that it has to be uh, properly sample has to be properly oriented and in many cases we found that very uh, the signals are dependent on the sample thickness. The sample thickness is high, the hard if signals are very good, the sample thickness are small, hard if signals are bad. So, that is why one needs to use a very high intensity beam at the as an incident beam on the sample uh, that is to be focused by the objective lens very properly on the sample and so that the intensities of the hard if detector or the hard in the hard if detector for the thin regions of the sample can be comparable. Another important technique which is attached to the stem is the converged beam electron diffraction and the nano beam electron diffraction. Specifically the nano beam electron diffraction is nowadays widely used. We know that many uh, techniques allows us <coughs> to form grains or the particles which are very small suppose less than 5 nanometers. So, in those cases it is very difficult to obtain diffraction information using conventional diffraction like the, the selected ray diffraction pattern. So, one needs to use the use the C bed or the convergent electron diffraction or specifically nano beam electron diffraction. To give you an example suppose there is a particle here small which I marked there in the image size is approximately 10 nanometers. So, to obtain diffraction information from such a small particle one needs to use a very fine probe and that kind of fine probe can be obtained in a stem mode. So, that the beam which is highly convergent size of the beam of the order of suppose few nanometers can be allowed to fall on this particle and then diffraction can be collected. And this is also now and I done routinely in the fake uh, guns one has to understand that the nano beam electron diffraction depends on the available intensities of the incident beam because the sample is particle is not so thin the diffracted beam intensity may not be sufficient enough to be recorded by the recording device. So, that is why in many cases what is done is that <coughs> the beams are uh, rather we use the fake beam which is having very high intensity and allow to fall on the specimen and then diffracted beam is collected. One of the, uh, the advantage of this is that one can actually obtain uh, the information for large number of particles by this way and then uh, get full scale diffraction information from the particles. So, uh, as you see I am not going to discuss about holography here it is itself is a big subject. As you see that using all these kinds of detectors in the scanning transmission electron microscopy one can obtain information in compressing uh, normal white field, analog dark field, jet contrast images, composition analysis by yields, energy filter images by yields as well as diffraction information by nano beam electron diffraction. So, this actually seems to like that it gives all kinds of informations and 
advantages are many obviously advantages are many but there are disadvantages the disadvantage is that the image is in stem mode is obtained in serial manner so therefore it has practical problems like recording the images sometime can be long and that's why in that time long recording time sometime images can shift there will be drift of the images not only that it is also possible that during this taking the images the even the, uh, the current of the beam electron beam which is falling from the uh, stem detector uh, stem sorry from the objective lens can degrade as a function of time. So, the, this can actually give sticky images many times in stem those of you who have used the stem will find if your microscope is not functioning at the optimum level you will get sticky images in the uh, computer skin. And not only that if you use a very highly convergent high you know uh, current electron beams this can damage the sample. Many times you will find if you do nanometer electron diffraction on a particular particle after taking the diffraction pattern particle is basically change. So, the sample damage is very high that is why in the stem mode. So, one has to be very uh, careful about the particular specimen sensitivity of the specimen uh, towards the electron beam. If the specimen is very sensitive to electron beam one should not use stem in a uh, FEG uh, gun rather one should use FEG in the lab 6 filament where the intensity of electron beam is normally low. So, basically the uses of the stem depends on the that particular type of material if the material is good and stable you can go ahead with the normal FEG microscope stem configuration and obtain all kind of information if material is beam sensitive you cannot do it. So, you have to change to the normal microscope. So, in a nutshell I have discussed with you the high resolution electron microscope stem in the last 3 4 lectures in the next lecture I am going to show you two important things one is the in situ electron microscopy briefly I will discuss and to some extent I will discuss about the EDS detector which is normally attached to the microscope. Nowadays in fact new concept has come where super EDS is used instead of using one EDS detector one can use several EDS detector in the electron microscope which is then the titan. So, I am going to discuss about that and then I will move on to the scanning electron microscope where different kinds of scanning electron microscopic techniques like the EBSD electron beam uh, elect, uh, backscatter electron diffraction patterns or in situ ACM uh, can be uh, used to obtain lots of informations.